So please sabar karai sar whatever. I remember booting up Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time. It felt illegal. The harsh wait between announcement and release was a lengthy ordeal, and some of us were less than impressed with the end product. Some of us even blamed one another for the fans rushing out the game, so CDPR didn't want to. Which is bullshit, of course. CDPR is 100% to blame. The launch was a disaster and it was a huge wake-up call to them that the community would not be letting them get away with their lies, of which there are many. I really don't need to go too in-depth in the matter, since anyone who is watching this video has probably seen the bugs in the state of last gen. I'll have a look around. So I won't dive into that. Instead, I'm going to talk about how CDPR has gone about changing people's outlooks on the game, which I will say, they have made some big changes that greatly improve it. This month they have just released the long awaited 1.5 update of the game, which enhances the next gen consoles with an exclusive mode that clears up the graphics a fair bit and ups the frame rate while also adding some content only accessible on those consoles. Considering previously, Cyberpunk ran on the last gen versions of the game on the Series X and PS5 which were locked at 1080p, the difference is staggering. Now it's not exactly the same on last gen, but I can feel and I can see a difference on them as well. I played the game on a PS4 and still enjoyed it on release, but even then it was a mess. Buggy, slow, and compared to the 1.5 update, you can't go back. Everything in the 1.5 update just feels better. Driving feels better and not as stilted. Combat is fast paced and the frame rate doesn't dip as often and exploration is streamlined through the map and isn't as cluttered. The graphics are finally where I want them to be on last gen and they are pretty much on par with Red Dead 2. Now there's actually car chases and random events which you can actually be involved with. There's custom apartments, weapons, clothing and overhauls to every major system in the game such as the economy which means a larger power of eddies from jobs and heavy improvements to the UI and gameplay. All of these things bring so much more life to the world of Night City. Really, you could say I have lowered standards, but having these additions, even when many other games have had them for years, brings out the beauty of Cyberpunk to a stunning degree. A lot of those games don't have the style that is represented here, and more of them should. It looks and plays like a charm. Dozens of quality of life features added and multiple changes to the character customization are introduced where you are able to customize your character in the mirror of your apartment. This is what people were waiting for to come back to the game. And for the first time in ages we can finally see what the game was intended to be. You know, business is booming. It's nice to see you again Spider-Man, but it's not. Thank you, man. That was business? Booming! Now now it's the time that I have to talk about my experience with the game, my personal experience and well, it's it's, uh, it's a long journey. Like I said, I did enjoy the game on release, but there were caveats to that uh, that experience. I would be dropping frames in combat and, and just driving around, exploring. It kind of felt like everything you were doing was going to crash the game. You know, it really sucks, because if the game came out the way that, that, that update 1.5 has, well, kind of saved the game, then we wouldn't be in this mess and people will say some people will say some very dumb people will say is that us the fans apparently we were pushing cdpr and and forcing them to make that decision no no that's just wrong i don't know how you could be that stupid to believe such a thing but but no that's not how it went at all and cdpr i mean they rushed the game, they knew what they were doing, they knew what they were doing immediately when they fucking tried to hide actual reviewers footage. I'm not going to forget about that story, I mean, CDPR actually had to limit what re reviewers were showing as footage, they had to give them specific issued footage, which is such a sketchy practice, like they were trying to pull the wool over our eyes. I trusted them, I pre-ordered the buggy game and I don't know why. I mean, that's the effect of, of what that footage showed me. It showed me that the game was polished on last gen, which, which is just a travesty, because when it did launch...
What? <laughs> what the fuck is that bug? Now, I could paint the sidewalk with your guts, but that wouldn't get me what I'm old. Oh, you wanna try? Go on, son! Save me! Regardless, I'm here to talk about update 1.5, and that is something to actually talk about for once. There isn't negative about this game. Walking the streets of the future in Cyberpunk 2077 on update 1.5 is actually a pretty surreal experience. If I could feel that feeling of, of actually launching Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time again, I mean, that's how it felt opening update 1.5 on my console, because honestly, it's been such a long time coming. It's been like, it's almost been a whole two years reaching this point, and it just, it, it feels magical again. See, I love the story of this game. I love the narratives in games. I love to, to analyze them. I like to I like to get to understand these characters more and getting to do that again, but in a stable and actually actually good state of the game, I, I have been able to enjoy it just a little bit more. And it's just a lot more to the world now. You can all say that these features in update 1.5 should have been present on the game at launch. But frankly, I, I'm glad I got them at all in the end, because, I mean, CDPR could have easily just pulled a, a hit and run and fucking left after everything just went not in their way, which I'm glad they didn't. I think Cyberpunk 2077 still has a long way to go until it's a complete game, until it's an actual RPG. There are a bunch of elements to this game that just aren't as fleshed out as they should be. If you can believe it, The Witcher 3 does dialogue better than this game. And there is a major problem with choices just not having any impact. I'm not saying that none of them have any impact, that's not true. A bunch of side content does have choices that impact its characters, or the world around them. It's just that the consequences to those decisions are just not as big as you could hope for. But at the end of the day, I can live with that as long as everything else works. I didn't get to wait as long as some of the other people did for, for Cyberpunk, so I wasn't as disappointed, but when I got more and more into the, the rabbit hole that was this game's launch, yeah, that kind of shook things up a bit. Can't really do anything about it now, so I just sort of have to forgive and forget. At this point, I would absolutely recommend that everyone should try the game out. If not for next gen, last gen. Because it is finally working at a quality that is somewhat consistent with other open world games. Now, CDPR isn't quite finished with the additions yet. I think they've made it entirely clear they are working on DLCs and further updates moving forward. But I reckon that this is the one reminder to the devoted members of the community that CDPR is working to ensure a stable future for this game. One where it is supported and held to a high standard amongst its competitors. There's been an increase of numbers in the player base and I see lots of good things happening for this game now. CDPR can work on improving these systems more and creating new content to make happy people even happier. Seeing all this news come up about the game, I hope they can deliver on their promises and more. No one is saying you can't still hold a grudge against CDPR for their PR scandal and lying to consumers one way or another. But this update shows that the company is still committed to making the best game possible, as they did with The Witcher 3. Which we all know, the DLC made a perfect game even better. DLC that was equal to the size of the base game. That's some kind of incredible in the industry today. If we can expect that for Cyberpunk 2077, then when those come out, we will have a masterpiece of an RPG to replay for years to come.